Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Volcano Block. I think for today uh, I want to increase the capabilities of our summoner and by that meaning I want to make it bigger, add more spawners I think inside so we can turn multiple of them on at the same time, multiple of them off at the same time as well. So I think it's time to raise up a platform above this middle part behind me, uh, possibly the size of this or maybe this. I don't know yet, uh, or maybe just like halfway big, kind of, and then add possibly either some ladders to get up or just uh, some staircases on the side, but I need need this to be better. Uh, I don't know if we want to actually do something f automatic for shulkers, which I think I have in here, because uh, I don't think we're going to need them that much uh, for anything, and I don't have block sound because I was AFK. No, I need to do this. Here we go. I think we should have block sounds now. All right. So let me just uh, start working on a bit of a platform and decide how big it's going to be uh, and hopefully we can get everything done that we need to do. I started tearing down my old summoner with this displacer and this was taking forever and it aches hunger as well. So I just decided not to do that and uh, went to form up some levels because I saw in the enchanting table that we can get self touch for 17 levels. Uh, so we can do that and it's just self touch. I don't really need anything else We can make another soul steel pickaxe if we want to and combine them with uh, um, Better enchantments or we can just enchant books to get better enchantments, but for the moment I think it's fine. We don't need anything that really breaks things faster. So uh, now I can just do this Not worry about losing all the glass, which is amazing and we can do that as well and then come back here and do that. And then this is our old summoner, pretty much gone. There we go. Uh, I can actually, uh, I need, don't have space in my inventory for this currently. So uh, let's just get rid of a few things. Uh, the empty summoner we need to put inside. I don't need that many of those. Possibly need some stairs, but I'll get all, I will get all the upgrades, I think. Yeah, we don't need these guys, at least. Soul books, the displacer, the hoe, the kniffy. There we go. Okay, so I did a bit of work up here. We have beautiful staircases now and a beautiful platform. Uh, and then above the platform, we have another platform. So this is going to be our killing area. I made it three by three because big slimes can fit into this area. So if we put, let's say, stairs here, we're not going to be able to climb up and we're going to be far enough away, I think, that the mobs won't be able to hurt us. So we can just do that. We could even put like fences or cobblestone walls to be a tiny bit closer or I can just chisel, uh, we can just do that basically. Not chiseling planes but we can uh, do grid sized cubes and I can't chisel stairs. So let's just do that uh, and let's say we do it like this. And then we do, let's say this much. That I think will look better like so and then just the last two sides we'll do that real fast i don't think i should explode with bits everywhere wonderful so that's going to be a tiny bit further away so that the mobs can't hit me i can even chisel this if we wanted to but then we get uh very poor textures so we're not going to do that because we have connected textures through optifine uh so i think that's fine uh the platform above though uh, i have a pathway up here Basically, each of the stone bricks here, uh, I haven't placed all of them yet, but that will have a summoner on top, which we do have here, for example. So let's say we put a summoner right there. Uh, and then I don't know uh, how I would want to uh, get redstone signals to these, because uh, for redstone, we can do integrated dynamics, I think. Because we can put a pipe down here, and there's also facades, I think. For, uh, yeah, there's facades uh, for uh, integrated dynamics. Uh, and uh, we can just put a cable down here and then put, let's say, a lever right up beneath the spawner here. And then we can turn it on and off, uh, which I think will be pretty cool. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to need a bunch of is vector plates. And those are going to require a lot of glue uh, or slime balls. And glue is bone meal or ender dust as well, or blackened bone meal. Bat poop, flesh meal, that's flesh, charcoal, what what powder, that's things that we don't have yet. But um, let's say we would do just one spawner. I think we can get some slime spawning here. 
Uh, I hope it's going to be high enough for slimes to spawn at least. Uh, but this is the length that I want it to be. And then we need to put another layer of stone bricks around just to make a wall. And I'm going to make everything uh, or the entire wall out of glass. And this guy keeps messing with me scrolling stuff. Uh, so here we would have one, two, three, possibly tall, if not more, well, probably more. Uh, we're probably going to have it five tall, I think. And then another stone brick on top. And this actually needs to be the corner. So actually, no, uh, this is going to be the corner. So here, one, two, three, four, five, and then a layer like that. So that is basically <clears throat> going to be the look of it. Uh, and we can keep everything glass because we... Uh, we don't have to have everything dark because we're already in a dark dimension. Uh, so we should be fine on that part. So I think I need to do a bunch of building. And before that, I'm going to go crush a bunch of stone so we can make some stone dust so we can turn that stone dust into glass because just making sand with the sand burst seeds is kind of manual. So I don't really want to do that. Uh, and what is this? Is this a glass block out of place? Yes. Don't know why. All right. Okay. Uh, so let me do a tiny bit more building around and get a bunch of glass going and we should be finished by the time I come back. I have basically run out of iron making all the vector plates uh, and I need more iron. So I'm making that downstairs uh, with the primor primordialis reactor to make more primordium and then the atomic reshaper on stone to get some more iron ore going. Uh, but this is as much vector plates as I could fit in here. I have almost a stack left, but I wanted to get slime spawning and then I realized that uh, slime essence requires the uh, this composition. So this is composer, which is blocks of ender steel, which end steel is ender iron dust, which is more iron. So and more ender dust, which we can get from the ender bone chunks uh, when we kill some endermen. Uh, but iron is basically a priority now. So I'm just uh, crafting a bunch of primordium. Now that we have all of the different crops, uh, plus the tree farm, we can get enough of the nine items for uh, a bunch of primordium. So down here, uh, that is exactly what is happening. Uh, the sa sad part is that this guy only extracts one item at a time. Uh, and I'm probably just going to be here and manually add things in because uh, I think that's going to be easier. So I'm just going to grab all of these and then they can just sit here and do this every so often just to get everything filled in. Uh, and that should be pretty cool to get a bunch of primordium because we have uh, only three left here. This guy is currently just heating up. Uh, and I'm going to wait for these to do their thing uh, and get us a bunch of iron. I'm going to get that doubled uh, and then we can hopefully finish up the summoner room up top. All of the vector plates are now in and I already added one redstone control to this. As you can see, this guy is running but is off. Uh, he's at 62% summoned and if we go downstairs and I flip this lever like so and then we go up top because I think I have to be still close to it for it to start spawning. Yeah. Uh, so we might need a way to get to the the top tippy top of this because uh, this starts spawning skeletons go away and they go to the middle if they don't see me uh, which I can probably hide in the corner somehow uh, but for now uh, we can uh, we can just be on top of this to activate the spawner we can't really be below because the spawners are a bit further away than I would want them to be uh, because we need more of the the orbs basically I don't know why these guys are dying why are you dying? Does this give stuff to kill them? Well, I don't know. They're dying, at least. Uh, for some reason. I don't know why. And this guy apparently has thorns. But we can kill them. We can get their drops. It works. Uh, I don't know if I can stand like underneath this if the spawner's uh, close enough. But we need more of those orbs. And the orbs are gotten by taking glue and ender dust, and then uh, we need to fill those with uh, just any sort of essence to get them filled up. But seeing standing underneath here does work. Uh, we just need a, f a couple more to get them fully running while I'm uh, basically sitting here or anywhere else in the on this floor per se. So if I flick the lever again, it turns off, and the way it works is with these. I have a redstone reader and a redstone writer. And to get the variable card that you need is is this guy is to set to aspect redstone high and it's type boolean. So it basically just says that this guy uh, is gonna accept uh, high power. So if I turn it on, we get a redstone signal. If I turn it off, we don't get a redstone signal, which is really neat. And to get that variable card, you just put it here. 
and you get redstone high variable and you can put it back here to clear it up. So that is how I, uh, how I did it up top. And I made some facades, which are just four glue and a block of crystallized mineral. And you can combine those with any sort of block to get the color that you need. And I just used uh, the Zen stone up top. Uh, I need to go grab a bit more ladders so we can probably get up top here just to stand there, I guess, for the skeletons to spawn. But now that I think about it, we can just stand here if it, uh, if it runs. And we're gonna get those murky orbs uh, soon enough. So I processed a bunch of iron. I also processed all the ancient cobblestone that I had. So I think one of these has ancient cobblestone. Yeah, we don't need you in there anymore because I don't think we're gonna be processing ancient cobblestone uh, at all. So we need to just unlock you uh, and then we can uninstall upgrades, right? That's void overflow. And then we can uh, just put that in here and break this guy and keep it as a normal wooden crate. Lovely. Uh, I needed some more uh, of those orbs, and that is Ender Dust, I think. Is it Ender Dust? Yeah. So Ender Dust is gotten by Ender Bone Chunks and the Sledgehammer uh, Chunk. Do we have any? We have Blackened Bone Chunks, but we don't have Ender Bone Chunks. We need Ender Bones. I don't know if I have those. I have 20, so we can get a, at least a couple, say 15 for now, uh, and then take our Sledgehammer and get ourselves a bit of Ender Dust, like so. Uh, and we can then take some glue. And let's say we want... We can get four, I think. Five, actually. But uh, I don't know how much essence I have. I have a lot of zombie pigment, so we can just use that. Because that is just going to farm us gold, I think. And I don't think we need to do anything with really with zombie pigment essence. So we can just get a bunch of orbs this way. And I'm gonna go toss them in the spawner and we're gonna see how far the range increases. So I've been standing here for a couple of minutes and the murky orbs are far enough, uh, or are increasing the range far enough that we can stand here and the skeleton is still spawn. So that is uh, probably what we need. I might do some testing in between episodes of how many actually we need. I added them through these trapdoors, which allows me easy access to the spawner and the top trapdoor also prevents uh, other mobs from spawning on top. Because then I think we could get a skeleton right here in the middle, uh, possibly. I don't know if it checks for two full blocks, but, you know, it does work that way. So it's nice. Okay, so that does run. We can turn that off for the moment uh, and then just go ham on these skeletons. And items are going to fly everywhere and on the sides and all that, but I think it's fine. Uh, we can probably put a gravity block somewhere to attract them to this hopper at least uh, somehow. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, depends on how I actually want to set up, set this up. I don't know how far away this has to be for automatic killing. If I can have it like here on the side somewhere and kill the mobs in the middle with that, uh, with the block that I was using before. I don't rem remember what it's called, but the spike plate thingy. Uh, and if we can put the spike plate thing in the middle, that might be perfect. Uh, and then the hopper underneath and then just run a hopper into here and then do the pedestal on the side. So I'm gonna have to do some testing off camera. I'll play around with it and see what what does work where. Uh, and I can probably just do that in creative so I have uh, less of a hassle of breaking and replacing everything over here. Uh, and down here, we have still a bit of iron. Uh, actually, I have it, I believe, as iron dust for now because we can use iron dust to make uh, end steel anyway. And the gold dust, I don't think we need to use for anything. It's just smelted into that. And you can turn ender steel back into gold, apparently. Uh, so I'll just get that smelted through the heat furnace. That thing, by the way, is the most amazing thing ever because it smelts things super, super, super quickly. So do I have a chest anywhere just to toss stuff in? Uh, here, we're gonna put it here just so I can have this on the side. Uh, so we needed to go into embers basically here. So we needed to make an archaic circuit, which is archaic brick, uh, which needs to be, I don't, I, it, which needs to be molten archaeum, which is molten gold and mineral resin and archaeum. So we need to set up our whole thingy-mabob setup with uh, embers. And I need to uh, go read in this ancient codex again for how things work. I might actually go watch my project project ozone videos uh, For my own tutorial on how to do embers kind of 
because uh, I need to set them up somewhere over here. Uh, and I already set up as well some energy and crystal seeds just to manually harvest them because I was running a tiny bit low on the energy and crystal. Uh, so I did that. Even though we have the this chest here with all of the rock crystal cutting thingamabobs, but I think we need more iron in general. So I don't know how eventually we're going to get iron. Probably with Botania and the Orchid. That I think might be the easiest way to automatically generate resources because we can generate mana probably automatically somehow. Uh, and uh, we can then use that to automatically generate ores and then we're going to have enough iron to get, make enough ceramic to automate the whole rock crystal thingamabob. So yeah, let me take a look at embers, uh, see how much time we have left on the episode and see how much we can get done. I'm probably going to set up some machines so we can uh, start melting stuff and now that we can start melting stuff we can probably use this mechanical squeezer no actually we can use just the drying basin uh which i don't know where it where it is here they are uh we can just use this guy to dry some mineral that we melt with embers uh, and get ourselves some crystallized mineral that could be also cool i have a few embers machines set up. I have a pressure refinery here which is much better at processing ember shards uh, or ember crystals into like fluid ember or gassy ember or whatever it is. Uh, rather than using the ember activator, I think I tossed it in my system. Uh, because this guy, if set up correctly, which is a copper block underneath it and then eight lava sources around, and I don't think it even needs to be sources, but this basically gets me a three times production multiplier so I can get three times as much ember crystals uh, or worth out of embers. I can't explain. Hold on. Pa pa pa. Okay, so reset. <laughs> Basically, one ember shard, ember crystal, makes, let's say, a thousand ember. This guy would make three thousand, but I don't know what the exact numbers are. So basically, the embers are then transmitted with ember emitters to linked up to this ember receptor into this copper cell, which is basically just ember storage, and it can store, store, 24,000 embers, and then I'm transferring it with another emitter and another receptor over to this melter, and it has to be the bottom block of the melter. And this guy melted 16 gold into liquid molten gold, uh, and we can grab that tank, uh, and then we need to melt uh, an even amount, I think. Uh, I have it here. We need the grass blocks or the gravel. We need this uh, archaeum. So it's four millibuckets and four millibuckets of mineral resin. So I have to set up another dark tank. So we're going to take this one, put it here. And then I'm going to put in, let's say, eight mineral wood. I don't know how much this is going to make. Uh, if we use here, it makes 72 millibuckets. So one gold makes how much? 144. So we need half as much mineral wood as we do gold. So eight will be perfect, I think. Because gold makes twice as many. No, we need twice as much mineral than we do gold. So we put in eight. We need another uh, this many. Because that's going to make uh, the correct amount, I think. So that should be 2.3 buckets worth. And then we can use this mixer centrifuge where we can extract embers from here as well. I'm probably going to put the ember receptor here on the side. Uh, so let's just do that real quick. I'm going to put you here. Uh, and then we're gonna say this and that. Oh, there we go. Now it's gonna be hooked up. Wonderful. Okay. And then we can put another one of these. Ember emitter, ember receiver. I'm gonna put you here. Uh, and then the receiver, I don't know where it has to go here. I'm gonna have to read it up in the book. Uh, what is this? This is the mixer centrifuge. Uh, each face of the bottom of the centrifuge is its own tank. When fluid is pumped into these tanks in a particular combination and the top block of the centrifuge is given ember, a molten alloy will be created which can be pumped out of the top block. Okay, so we can put a ember receptor right there. We can link it up to this guy. Uh, and this guy can be turned off with a lever, I think. It's already going for some reason. Uh, I want to put one of these dials here as well so we can see okay uh, and then we can pump in some gold uh, from there and then we're gonna put mineral here and we need another fluid extractor uh, to be made because we can put that there and then an item pipe uh, not that not an item pipe we need a fluid pipe this guy 
and then we're gonna have a fluid pipe here and then we need another fluid extractor so let me make that real quick I have reorganized a little bit and we can add one fluid extractor here and another tank because I think the centrifuge is gonna is able of mixing more than just uh, two items I think but we don't have any recipes here that would make two uh, more than two okay so that's fine we can make molten gold and molten silver into electrum which is then used to make what ender steel electrum tools i guess uh we can make the mol molten bronze as well which is used to make winding gears which is another pickaxe thingy wind up i don't know what that is that's things that i don't know yet uh and then we can also make the Archaeum, which is what we're making right now, and Molten Dawnstone, which I assume we're going to need for uh, making uh, other things here. But I don't know if it's just the Archaic Bricks. It looks like it's just the Archaeum that we need for now. So I'm going to turn that on and turn this on. And this should start processing. It has some embers, so we should start as we toss a lever here. We should see Archaeum come in here. Lovely. Nice. So that processed all of it, and I should have enough embers in here to process it and be done with it, pretty much. So the next thing that we need is the stamper. So the stamper is this, the stamp base, and the bar stamp, and we have another one of these, which is lovely. I'm probably going to need a few more levers, but the stamp base goes here. And then we need a block in the middle, it's just going to be clay, and then that there. Uh, and then we put, I believe, this guy there. And the stamp base is what needs the the liquid. Uh, so we need to extract out of this tank and put into here. Uh, so I need another extractor. And I think this needs also some, uh, some embers. So I think you can put it on top. And we're going to sneak right click this guy. And we can come over here. And hopefully that'll work if we add an, um, an ember emitter here. Uh, and then we need some more levers as well. So let me make the things that I need and we can uh, set that up hopefully I'm pretty sure I have everything ready. This top block has embers I uh, connected the two and added some levers and with these. Oh, they just get tossed out. I Thought you could extract from this But oh well, okay, we don't need to do that then uh, We can just use a hopper and a gravity block I guess but this should make us a bunch of uh, archaic stone uh, which is a quest here, archaic bricks. We get more ember crystals, lovely. And then the archaic circuit is just copper and four of these. So what we can do is, I have hoppers here. Let's set up this here. Take the chest and put it right here. Uh, and then we just need a gravity block. And I don't know if the gravity block would suck it up right away. Where are they going now? Oh. They're going weirdly. I don't know. Okay. I'll just leave it be and do its thing. Okay. We can craft the archaic circuit now, which is just one copper. So we can do that and take it like so. Archaic circuit. So I don't need the item extractor. I don't need the pipes anymore. Caminite plates. That can go away. The levers I have enough of. Can get rid of some blocks here and we can now process actually our lead uh, so i think i'll toss that in the melter next and we don't need to put that into the centrifuge so what i'll do is just turn off these levers we're gonna turn this one on and that one's gonna be off and this can get melted and it's probably it should go in here once it's uh done because that one's off so we should see molten lead here and then we can just replace that tank with uh, this tank uh and uh process the lead because that should double it I think so we should be good on that part uh, are you almost done we have one of those uh, fluid dials here. we can possibly toss this on the stamper not inside there there we go okay now it's done all right okay so the archaic circuit was required to make the regular calculator or avoid upgrade for the calculator. So we need two refined circuits, a calculator screen, moonstone, smooth onyx, circuit, the calculator assembly. So I have some crafting ahead of me, but I think we can get to our first calculator. We can now craft our first calculator, which should get us a quest complete right here.
We need a power cube as well. I think we should have everything that we need for this power cube. Yep. Okay. Calculator completed. We get five XP levels. Wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> Use an ember receptor on the power cube and it will accept power. Ooh. Okay. Ember. Wait. Receptor. Have the things that requires to make this. Uh, and we need also an ember activator, which should be, or emitter. I think it's this. Yeah, we have still some of the plums. Okay. So do I have another lever left? I think I do. One more. Do we have any more spots on this? I have my dial. Can we see how much ember is in here without the dial? We cannot. Um, <clears throat> I could put the thingy on the bottom and put the power cube on the bottom and have machines downstairs, possibly. Because we can create power with, uh, with, um, whatchamacallit, with calculator later, I believe. So we're going to do this and this, and then I'll grab our hammer. There we go. Do we have any embers in here? Oh, we don't. Okay, we need to do some ember crystal melting gumball bobs. I think the the melter used up all of it. Uh, so let's go one, two, three, four. There we go, that should start going in here. Yep. Power cube. We're getting our F. We have our F. Oh my god. Okay, what you know what we can do? Oh my god, this is so amazing. Hold on. We take this. <clears throat> And then our basin. I don't know if this uh, transfers automatically, but we can use. Uh, we can probably get power into this, right? No. Power. Do we need to set the input and the output? Is there a thingy that we can do with like clicking on a calculator? Okay, let's do at calculator. Is there a wrench? There is a wrench. It is a reinforced pickaxe and a reinforced sword and a calculator. And that is reinforced stone, which is just cobble and planks. That can be done. Okay, hold on. We get some cobble. And some planks. And then we take our calculator. Not enough energy. Ah, okay, I see. I see what you mean. Aha, there we go. I don't know how much energy it can store. A regular calculator it doesn't say here. Oh, thousand. Okay. So we take this and this. Reinforced stone. How much energy does that use? Doesn't didn't say anything. Okay, we got reinforced stone. That's pretty cool. Okay, now we can take that and make ourselves. I think it's just sticks. I think I have some extra sticks in the sawmill here because I was processing that. Yep. There we go. <clears throat> so we can then take those with like that and like that we make a reinforced pickaxe and like that we can make reinforced sword let's get rid of the sticks and all that wonderful and then we take this plus this makes a wrench <clears throat> and i keep losing my voice for some reason can we now set like input output oh no we can pick up the whole power cube thing Okay, that's fine. Oh, and this remembers its position. That's cool. Uh, okay, so this is full. We can turn you off. And you're still transferring over to there. <clears throat> and I don't know if the embers stop transferring once the, the machine is full, but uh, it's currently transferring all the way over there. So we're just gonna turn you off uh, just so we have enough embers everywhere pretty much. Because this guy has like a little bit, this guy has very little bit. This guy has 6,000, that's pretty cool. Okay, and we have some, oh, we have 21,000 going everywhere. Okay, that's fine. So this is full of power. Uh, I'm gonna check if uh, any other side outputs. So I placed it here. I placed it here. This doesn't automatically give power. What are our options for cabling? 
I mean, we have the, these, but do we have energy? Can we make these energy pipes, energy importer, energy interface, <clears throat> atomic multiplier? Um, I don't know how we can transfer power. I mean, there's batteries. I don't know if there's a, we can use this wrench in integrated dynamics. We can use it to turn this. I don't know how you change the input and the output of this. Uh, so let me have a little bit of a, a fiddle around with this machine and see how we can get power into our mechanical squeezer. All right, integrated dynamics can take care of everything. Basically, I put an energy interface on the power cube and then an energy exporter here and an energy exporter here. So we have a mechanical drying basin now making us blocks of crystallized mineral. This guy can process uh, the uh, the mineral wood into actual mineral resin and also crystallized mineral chunks as well. <clears throat> and this guy is just super efficient at making these. We're currently not really making a lot of power because uh, this power cube is only, this is 250 RF per tick, it seems, because we can see that on the top left. So that is pretty cool. <clears throat> we can now have a bunch of crystallized mineral and we can make all of the interdynamics things that we would want. And with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Also, you can consider subscribing to see new videos. Hit the notification bell to get notified of when new videos go live. Support me on Patreon if you want, and I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.